Yes folks, it's totally awesome fishing time again and I'm down here at Val Farm Fishery which is a regular day to get water. Gets a lot of stick, gets a lot of people come here so that tells you that fishing's pretty consistent. A lot of fishing here, three different lakes. It's just a regular day ticket. It's not all secret school stuff, syndicate, private, you be my friend and I'll be your friend, that type of stuff. Just a regular day to get water. I've got a whole lake to myself. I cannot believe it, I've come on a Tuesday Big storm coming in tonight. I'm racing trying to get you guys a film. I want to tell you a little bit about accurate casting with a swim feeder that perhaps some of the beginners don't know. I'm going for target species, I guess probably be bream. That's what I'm sort of aiming for. Man, autumn sunshine is nice. Anyway, I'm going to get myself set up. First thing I'm going to do before I even tackle up is I'm going to put some ground bait out there because with no anglers around here, it might be from the weekend was busy, it might be quiet now. They've all settled down and what happens is they're not fed by anglers. They start going right on the bottom and they're looking for natural food. So they're sort of spread out, if that makes sense. So what I want to do is get some bait out. I'm just going to go, look, there's lovely features, willows behind me. There's a bush down here. I've put one ball just off the point there. I've put three balls just in close here because I might try, I've got the match rods, I might try float fishing. But my target is going to the middle of the lake because although you can't get fish around the margins, and I'm a lover of margin fishing, you can go out in the middle as well. And sometimes, if there's a lot of anglers, they push the fish out in the middle. Anglers don't know this. They always think, oh, I've got to go really close. But a lot of the time, if I see fish moving, I'll target out deep. First things, ground bait balls. Now, I wish I could tell you that I knew what was in this bucket of goodies. There is definitely sweet corn. If you get sweet corn, don't buy it in a tin. Just go in a freezer, supermarket somewhere, get a bag of frozen sweet corn. Let me show you. It's idiot free. I know what it is. One pound fifty, couple of pounds. You've got a load of sweet corn. I've got two there. One for loose feed, one for going in the ground bait. I got in there. Bailey's number one horse feed, some bran, bit of everything I could get out of my old storage ground bait bucket. So I don't even know what it smells of. But I've made up about a dozen balls this size with the sweet corn tipped in there as well. And I've squeezed it pretty hard because there's a lot of small fish in here as well if I put it in as a, almost a loose soft cloud bait it's going to dissolve they're going to muller their way through that pretty quickly so I've made them quite hard because I want the bream to chew at it and the other species and it make it harder for the small fish to try and break it all up and eat it all because trust me although I've got half a bucket of feed here I'm not going to use all that I don't suppose I'm going to be using swim food I want to get an initial base out there small fish will eat everything you put in there Got to put it out with a special catapult so guys know which catapult is which. It's a ground bait catapult. Okay, I've got a couple of catapults to show you here. No, no, you know totally us. We're not selling them. We're not one of those sponsored anglers. Get, must use this catapult, must use that. I'm just telling you, choose whichever mate you want. I'm talking here, I'm talking pouches. That's right, this is a soft pouch. So therefore, when you put for distance casting, distance casting, distance ground baiting, you pop your ground bait ball in there. As you pull it back like that, you might be able to see the sides of the pouch squash. See, they do this. So they, what they're doing is squeezing in. Now you can see, look, it's already broken that ball of ground bait apart. There, look, it's gonna fall apart. You're gonna fly it all over the place. Now you might think, oh, well, the next one, I'll make it a bit harder. Well, the problem is that ground bait that's sprayed all over there has taken the fish with it. You want to bring the fish to one area. You don't want to make any mistakes catapulting, do you, really? You don't want to spread the fish out too far. 
So, let's make this one back into a ball shape again. You want a rigid pouch catapult there, a rigid pouch, look, absolutely rigid. Then that way the ball, when you stretch it back like this, look, I can go right back, nice powerful elastic there is, that doesn't crush. What I'm also going to be doing is trying to use, let's say, look, those ducks. <laughs> ah, I do love ducks. They know that these ground bait balls are coming out there, but to be honest, that's pretty much where I want to get them anyway. But where that duck is, on the edge of the shiny patch and the dark patch is where I want to get. So that reflection in the water, if I stand up here, I could drop it from the shadow line. I could put, say, four or five balls in the shiny part, the shadow line, four or five in the other side, and I know, providing I stand here when I catapult out, I'm always going to be accurate. The first one could go anywhere. It's actually perfect. Now I've still got the ripple there, so I'm going to go to the left as well. All going well at the present, guys. Put one a tad short, I'll say, because I want a sort of six foot circle, really. That's the money shot, that one. That's right in the middle. That's right in the jumper. That's in the shiny patch there. So that will be, say, the right hand rod will be the shiny patch. Over there. That way, that groundwork can be working while I spend the next 20 minutes tackling up. Well, the wind's getting up, guys. Got to push on with this. Just about squeeze the session in here. I'm using an Avon quiver tip rod. I've got my swim feeder there on a running link. I've got another swivel here, which stops the swim feeder coming down. Then I've got a, le a link here of maybe 10 inches. You can see there's the feeder. So my actual hook bait is about four or five inches away from the feeder and the feeder I'm going to put in. Size 12 hook barbless. Let's load it up and send it out there.
Okay, now here's another tip. If you're a youngster or you're a beginner, if you don't have that reflection, not the shadow, reflection of the water to give you a target to aim for, and you're in an open expanse of water where there's no background to give you that reflection, then you're going to need to know when to stop that cast, when to slow it. The traditional way to do this is by what they call clipping down. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, the majority of fixed ball or spinning reels will have what's called a line retaining clip, which in this one, well, in this case, you can just see just there. And what happens is when you put the reel away, you just nick it like that. Okay, now you can also use that as your marker to stop you overcasting. So what you do is this. Now you don't want to clip up until you're absolutely happy that that's the distance you want. So I'm going to cast this one out. I'm going to go, okay, feather it. Gone a bit too far. Wind in, wind in, wind in. I can see the feeder on the surface. Bang, I want to drop it there. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, so from there, I just put the line into that retaining clip. Let's see if I can find it. Just lift it with your finger now. Look, it's, it's easy to do in a second, but it's, filming is difficult. So you can see, look, watch, I'll open the bail arm. Normally the line would come off. It won't, you see? It won't, it's stuck. Now that's fine, you think. Well, that's great. If I'm catching small fish, I could just retain that, keep working that area. What happens when I hook a big fish? It's going to snap. There's no drag. There's no give in the line. That's fair enough. But what you do then is you put two bank sticks out. I've got two out there. And you're going to... You're going to measure and only clip up for the first cast. I'll show you what I mean. So I've got my distance. I've clipped up to that perfect distance. I'll just show you now. I'm going to wheel the feeder in. I've had two bites. I guess they're skimmers. Nothing on the sweet corn. But I'm also going to show you some float fishing as well. Now I'm going to cast this really hard. Watch. So that I would normally overcast. And watch the spool. There's the jerk. It can't go any farther. It can't go past that clip. I'll show you again just so you know. I wouldn't cast that hard. But to stop that snatch, what you do it takes a little bit of. No, it's not rocket science. The more you do it, it's like riding a bike. You'll get it. It's as you cast, you watch your ledger, you watch your bait, you watch your feeder go through the air. You just hold the rod a little bit more vertical and it cushions that last few feet of the momentum. That way it doesn't snatch so much. Watch. Hold the rod back, bang. It just takes a little bit of momentum off it. It's dropped it perfectly, there's my clip up. So I've got my distance now. How am I gonna clip that up again? What you do is, you wind in, and then you're gonna count around these two bank sticks I've put out there, a pre-measured distance, a pre-number of turns, loops around this bank stick setup I've got. The feeder down, at the end of the bank stick, one here, and one there. No matter what distance you put them apart, you're gonna to have to count around them like this. You're gonna you're gonna loop around and around and each time you're gonna count how many times you've wound it around the bank stick. Remember that number. That is your distance for clipping up. Okay, I've now stopped it at six and a half turns up and down the bank sticks. So I know the distance my feeder hit out there is six and a half turns. So now all I do is bait up, cast out, I'll have the clip on so I don't overcast, and then I take it off. So if I do hook a big fish, I won't break off. Next time I want to get that distance, I bring my feeder over here, already empty or loaded. I do six and a half turns to here, go back to the reel, clip up, and then I won't overcast. I hope you've got the gist of that. It stops you overcasting. Just always remember, you've got to do this every time you cast. It takes a little while, but you'll be perfect accuracy. After working with the feeder for a while, I'm going to get a float set up for you. Here's another tip. When you're casting with a quiver tip rod, Obviously you want to get that accuracy going as straight as you can, so bring the rod straight back over your head, let the feeder settle behind you, line the butt up with where you want to cast, the bottom of the butt like this, and you should go fairly straight. But I find with the quiver tip, if I just roll the rod slightly, I don't get the line looping around the tip. So I just wind up to where I want to go, and as I put it back, instead of being like this vertical, the cast, I just rotate it, 
and the line's pulling on the side of the ring and that way hopefully it doesn't tangle up. Well that's giving you some tips on feeder fishing, ground baiting, but you can also at distance fish with a float. For that you need a waggler float that takes quite a lot of shot. The rod I'm going to be using now is a three piece 12 or 13 foot on average match rod. It's longer, it's more tippy, it's much lighter so it will cast a float better and if you've got a decent size float which I'll show you in a second I can fish almost the same distance as I'm fishing at the moment with that feeder. And occasionally you're going to find you can get fish on the float but not on the quiver tip. I don't know why, but it's wise to know when to make that change. Okay, for the float fishing, I've got myself set up with, get myself in a mess here, the rod's so long. I call that, it's a bodied wag. You can see the thickness, this is the waggler float, that's the body, that gives you extra buoyancy, if you like, which means you can carry extra shot. And in this case, this one's got Move that one up a bit. It's got three treble A shot on this one. But there's also a bit of leeway and I've got a BB on there as well just to pull it down. But you're going to have to plumb the depth so that you know what depth you're in. So but you, you buy one of these small plumb weights, you put your hook on there and you drop it down and obviously as it goes through the water, it should, if you've got your float starting at say two feet, if the water's five feet, it's going to keep pulling it down. Therefore, all you do is keep sliding your shot up, up, up until the float gets level. Now you can alter it if there's a bit of wind drift on. You probably want to keep about four or five inches of the bottom end of the hook, right by the bait, we'll say here, this is the plumb bob, just laying like this. That's what I like. I like to put, say, a small number eight shot about there, just to anchor that bait. Here's the bait, there's the shot, just to stop it dragging, it holds the float up a little bit. It's just another method to use, but you've got to plumb that depth first to make sure your float is set perfectly. The other point you want to take into consideration is the weight of the bait you're using, i.e. a big lobworm, a load of sweet corn, anything heavy will add to pulling that float under. You might have to undershot it to make sure the bait gives you the extra weight to make that float set properly. You might also want to put that float in a slightly darker area of water. So therefore when it does actually set and does cock, at least you can see that against the dark rather than the light. I'll move it to the right. Let it come up and settle. And as you can see, it stands out totally different with the colour. You can get yellow tops, black tops or red tops. Now I've just had a lift bite, there goes the bite guys. I'm actually filming, but I'm not moving the float. I'm not gonna move it. You might, you might get to see that bite. I'm gonna chuck some more. Loose feed around the float. And get it as close as you can around that float. There's the bite. You can just see that little dip. It goes down to the white setting on the float. That means there's something swirling around it or nosing around. He might not necessarily have the bait, but he's certainly having a look at it. Could be his body coming up against the line, but there's a fish in the swim there. Now you should also occasionally find you'll get a bite rather than the whole float going under. There's a lift bite there. You saw it raise the bait off the bottom. It's picked the bait up and disturbed the buoyancy of the float. Now it hasn't pulled it under, so it hasn't got it properly. It could be from a, of a bit of movement down there where they're digging around. But there's a white base underneath the orange tip and that, if you've got good eyesight and you're fishing fairly close in, you can use that as a bite indicator as well. What I'm waiting for 
is for the float to go right under. Well guys, I've actually moved from the lake where I was over there because the black clouds are starting to build a bit. I basically wanted to go that side of that lake because, you know, there's no, there's no wind noise. So I could do that instructional. Now I want to actually physically catch something. The bream aren't going on that lake. I've come to the middle lake here. I'm going to be fishing in here, but this way I'm going to be fishing a little bit closer. So that way I don't really need the feeder. I can feed manually by hand and that allows me to use what's called a link ledger. I'm going to make one up, give it a try, but I'm still going to put that float out the front because you never know that the wind is a coming. Well, the umbrella's had to go up. The camera's getting wet. It's all going peculiar on me. <laughs> well, I'm getting bites on the float just out in front of the snag here. Oh, oh fish on, fish on, guys. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. All is not lost on the float. There we go. Just that move from one late to the other, matter of yards, small skimmer bream there, float fish bread, so you can see by just changing tactics and changing swims, you've got tips on feeder fishing, you've got tips on float fishing, and it's paid off, I'm just about to show you the link ledger, I'll get this guy back, I think I'll put the bait out first, sorry, what do you think? Right, so what I wanted to show you guys before the rains come again, is what we call a link ledger. So I've taken the swim feeder off, I've still got the quiver tip rods, it's there with the swim feeder on it, but the second rod I've changed up. A link ledger is this. There's my hook bait, maybe a foot or so away, I've got a small shot there, and I've got a swivel, but on the end, I'm hoping you can see this, at the tag end of the swivel there, there's about two inches of nylon, quite thick nylon. At the end of that, there's a knot. And that's where I'm putting my shot, which is a BB shot, because I'm fishing well, relatively close here at the moment. This is called a link ledger, because it can put, you can put links, extra weights in there. I can make that heavier, I can put a swan shot, I can put a treble A, I can put other stuff up in there as well. I can even take it off and free line, and by putting a small stop shot here, when the fish takes the bait, he doesn't move a big shot, this one, he moves the smaller shot. So make sure you don't put a swan shot here to stop the swivel sliding down because he's got to move the swan shot to register a bite. Just use the lightest shot you can to hold bottom and this applies to rivers as well. And that way I think you'll see that there it slides up and down, minimum resistance. I'm going to put that one down and give that a go as well. So there's three different tips there for you. Well, at least we've got one skimmer bream out of it, but I'm not looking for the bailiff spin round or fishery guy. 70 mile an hour winds are giving tonight, coming in early. So I'm guessing I've got about three hours. Guys, I've got a fish on on the float and he's just about in a snag. In fact, he's in it. It's a big carp. It's a nice big carp. He might come out, he might not. I don't know. I've got my other line as well. It is a mess. Uh, there's no way around it. As you can see, he's got both lines. I might get lucky here. He's not, repeat, not two fish. It is what's called a cluster beep. Actually, the added pressure does help me a bit. I thought it was a bream to start with. It is quite a nice carp. Probably going to pop me in this snag in a minute. And that is on the float. Oh, this one's gone. Now he's off on that one, so. I'm parted off on one, I'm about to get parted off on the other, I feel. Just keep that maximum bend on. It's the way it is. There's the float. I'm going to keep it low. If, if this stays on, I'll be absolutely gobsmacked. Absolutely gobsmacked. You're going to bust me off any second. I can't remember, actually, why I changed the hook links on this. Cannot do a thing with him at the moment. It's either. Oh, so many snags. Look at this lot down there, guys. I've gone solid now. He swam into another snag. Yep. It's a big carp and he's on another snag as well. I 
might get lucky, who knows if I get lucky or not. The rod's maxed out totally. That was my chance. I need a longer net. I've got some cluster to sort out. Oh, maybe he's freed himself on the other line. I don't want him kiting left. If I can help it, I'm going to try and get him up here. Man of night, I've got to make of this fish. Do not know what to make of him. I know it's a carp. How big is he? Oh, double figure, no wonder, Sky. Double figure fish. No wonder I'm having trouble on a match rod. Come on, babe. He's in, boys. He's in. Oh, dear. There you go. Lovely looking carp, over 12 pounds on a match rod, float rod. The very float rod I showed you how to set up and a piece of bread flake. Wow, time for lunch. I've got fish bubbling and fizzing all over the place. Two separate swims. I think I'll probably concentrate on the one. But there's certainly some decent fish moving in front of me. Here we go, steaming the old engine, have a cup of tea and then, don't get me wrong, i still got one rod out here. But I think that's enough while I have something to uh, eat and drink. I normally have a flask, I've got to be honest, but I've pinched Mike's uh, bushcraft camping cooker and fell in, it, fell in love with it because it's nothing like a fresh cup of tea. And this thing boils on that Coleman's gas. No, Coleman's don't give it to me free, far from it, I'll pay for it. But that Coleman's gas thing is really, really efficient. Doesn't take much gas to boil that kettle. One little Tupperware container, sugar, tea bags in there, keep them dry. And a small flask with the milk, that keeps the milk cool, keeps it from going off. Fresh tea all day long. I can't tell you how many bubbles there are coming up out here. I'm almost frightened to put that float out. Best thing I can do is have something to eat and then look at it a second time. Another little tip. If you strike your right hand, hold the cup in your left hand. Bam. Man, there's a lot of fish in this swim. Holy cow. <laughs> I did tell you there's a lot of fish in this swim, didn't I? <laughs> well. There you go, nobody's eating a sandwich that fast, have they? I did say there's a lot of bubbles in the swim. Not a big fish, I don't think. Not as big as that 12 pounder for sure. He is going crazy. Oh dear, oh dear. At least he stays to the right, away from those snags. There we go guys, common carp, and there is the link ledger, just here look, there's the link ledger over the top. Just a regular common carp, we've taken on that link, link ledger, and so we had them on the float, had them on the link ledger, gives you a few more tips there, and there's so many bubbles, I'm going to show you before my tea goes cold. Oh, 
Jeez. <laughs> Just filming, guys. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm filming. And the rod's gone off in my right hand as I was filming bubbles. It's gone off. I don't know what it is, doesn't feel like a car. It's a bream, it's a big bream. Another fine carp. This one was on a link ledger again. I'm going to get that float out in just a jiff. Come on guys, I'm on with the float. I'm gonna go up over the top here. I'm gonna put the other reel. I'm over there. That's what I'm gonna try and get him, if I can. I thought to come back here a bit, he's gone right down the other side. Just down there. That was on sweet corn that time. Right down the inside of the bank. Very strange fight, he's been up on the surface. That was on sweet corn. I'm going to switch it off because I haven't got much memory card. I've given you guys so many tips on running out of memory card. Well, that one just pinged off, guys. On sweet corn, a peculiar fight. So he could have got wrapped in the line, I don't know. See if I can get you another bite. I'm going to put bread on this time and see if I can actually get you so you see the float go under. I'm going to try and bring it back right into those bubbles. I don't know whether you're going to see the bite, guys. I don't really want to move it. I'm right in those bubbles. I think I've actually lost a shot, to be honest. I think I've lost the BB shot off the bottom with that last uh, fish scrap I had. But just a humongous amount of bubbles down there. I don't know if they're all carp or if there's bream in there, roach, I don't really don't know. There's a huge amount of bubbles. There's a slight lift bite, then you see it come up to the white marker on the float. Bubbles absolutely like a washing machine around it. Sometimes I like moving it, sometimes I don't. They're very, very, very close to that float. That's what's making the float rise up and go down. If you concentrate on it, you should be able to see that sort of maybe quarter inch movements. That's all fish digging around on the bottom. I just need one to make the make that, that one mistake and slip up and take the bait. It's almost like rain on the surface there, guys, all those bubbles, but do you know what I think they're feeding on? I think they're gonna feeding on the ground bait itself. So I'm going to make a bit of paste up, a bit of ground bait paste up and give that a go because every time I put the feed in they go absolutely crazy. So what you've got to do really basically is just get get some ground bait, get your hands a little bit damp and just keep working it and working it till you get it into a good consistency of paste. Just like that. Not too soft and not too hard because you will be striking through it, you do not want a hard paste. I'm going to put a piece of this on, see if we can't get you guys a bite on the float. Right in amongst the bubbles. I'm just going to tighten up to it a tad, that's, that's me making it go like that. And as you slacken off it will come back up. He's wanting to go under, I'm willing it to go under. But I fear it's not going to happen on camera. There it is. Oh, nearly. Some of these could be really small skimmer bream bubbling away. 
missed it. Fresh piece of paste just gone out. Right in amongst the bubbles. There we go, guys. Eleven pounds two, Vale Farm carp. Two doubles, and this one was on the float as well. I've had a load more carp. I've got this one now. Thirteen eight. That's the biggest one so far. Wow, what a session! And I'm only giving you guys a few tips. I've had three doubles. Let's get it back. <laughs> that is the proverbial lump. So this is all I'm doing, a piece of flake, size 12, pinch it, give it a little twist, and there it is, just bring it in so you can see it, there's my waggler, my shot underneath, I could catch these fish free line and I may go free lining in a minute because I absolutely love that method, but seeing the float go under is pretty satisfying as well. I'm right in the middle of, you probably won't see it with the lens on this uh, head cam, my god there's some bubbles there's so many fish there that i think the float is frightened to cock it does not want to set right it's just setting right now you might or might not see it oh on the camera people on the camera oh, there's anglers and there's danglers now i've got to get my eye for the snags the big thing to do is to walk him straight the other side of this bush i've got my little routine here try and get him in the open water hopefully I'm going to go around that snag is he going to turn oh no he didn't want to turn there he is oh it's a big bream I've got him out big bream dragged him through the top there he comes here he goes here he goes there he goes that's what a lot of those bubbles are guys a nice bream there we are I'm beating the storm, hopefully, a few more fish, I, it's got to be the bream that I'm making all those bubbles, got to be, I'm just going to slide this one back, yuck, you've got to love them, haven't you, oh, who invented them, people that sell towels, I reckon, that's who the people who invented them, and there's a tip here guys, when you get bream, you're going to get slime up the line like this, yuck, if it's like here, down by the hook. I don't like that. I don't like it. I like to slide it up, get it in my nail, ping it off and hopefully get it away from any bait. Because that's, you know, if you ever had a bit of flick on your lip, it's pretty, there's a sort of bitter taste to it. I'm putting the net that side because I've got a routine for netting now. I've got to get them. I mean, probably nobody else fishes a swim, you know. They get up there, they go there to the traditional swim swims. But this is a perfectly good swim. It's just that you've got to have your head screwed on they're getting the fish away from any potential snags. At least you've got a take on camera. Hopefully, we might even get a second one. So many bubbles down there. Out we go again. I've got a whole sack of sweet corn left. A whole bag of sweet corn. The float's taking ages to sink. It's quite deep, there's about five feet. I'm guessing anyway. Float like still doesn't want to pull right down totally. There's so much swirling around there, I think it's holding the float up from settling properly. Every time I throw the bait in, you see the, you know, you won't see it, you guys, but it just dipped then. Every time the bait goes in, the bubbles come up. Get back eight now, sitting vertically all the time. Got a chair with the back, and I'll never sit in it. Further out, I have actually seen a real pretty, pretty big carp. Look like 15, 18 pounds jumping in the back of the float. There we go, that feels breamy. That definitely feels breamy. That's exactly what those bubbles are, guys. I feel. There he is. I called that one correctly. That has to be what the bubbles are. And I might even try, try a piece of sweet corn, I think. And I'm lucky in as much as... Uh, I've got sweet corn on now, two grains, but I'm lucky the wind, when it uh, is starting to blow up now, so you can see it's all clouded in the back there, it's blowing off my back here. So that's good news, I just don't need the rain. I'm right in amongst of a load of bubbles there. Just going to chance dropping this free line, which has got just a single BB. 
slightly on the left hand side of the swim in the hope a bigger carp might come in from the outside because I feel the bream are totally zoned in there at the moment. And what I'm going to do, I've got, I've got it in the buzzer, I've got no bobbins, I'm just watching the line and the quiver tip. And I'm finding I'm getting more bites on the bread on the float than I am on the corn. So let's go back to bread. Well guys, wait for this, I've had 15 carp. Three doubles, that one you saw, over 13 pounds. Not really going on the top, I've had two off the top, the rest have been mostly on the float and on the link ledger, and now I've gone to the free line with the BB. So all those methods I'm showing you are, uh, are worth using. It's spattering with rain, it's blowing really hard now, so I'm gonna give it maybe the five minute warning. Um, give it a go, hope you've enjoyed watching it. I've enjoyed fishing, I can tell you the first half was beautiful this morning, but I knew this weather was coming in like this. Other people over there packed up and gone. I think there's one, I think it's one of the guy here that's fishing, but they're not blowing quite as hard and bubbling quite as hard. I've got a little bit of ground bait left. I'm going to basically fish it out. I might get one more fish, but if you get the chance, give it a go. All those techniques will catch your fish. Finally going to have to go home in a minute. You know that last cast is coming, you know it, don't you? So listen, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to watch Mike's Totally Awesome Outdoor Show, which is going bananas on numbers. Oh, missed him. A little bit uh, premature on that, but there you go. That's the way it is when you see all these bubbles out there. Look at them. Stacks of them. I'm just going to try one piece of flake right in the middle of the bubbles. I fear the rock might disappear in a minute. I'm hoping I've got the umbrella packed away. Hoping I miss the rain. Oh, why tangle me? Why tangle? All I want to do is go fishy. Want the proverbial one more fish. I've had no roach, no rad, nothing like that. Which is a little bit strange. But then I am using pretty big pieces of flake here, bread flake, and three bunches, uh, three uh, grains of sweet corn. That's what I want to get. The wind is just giving me a bit of a pain now. It's just starting to, uh, just starting to drag that float out of position. And of course, with I'm free lining, it's also pulling that slightly in as well. And so I'm nearly, nearly out of ground, mate. Get out there, my. My God, I should be in a match. Look at that, perfect. It's going to crumble down and go right over my piece of bread flake laying on the bottom. That's what we're looking forward to. Up there, trees. Clouds are whizzing over. Luckily, it's coming off my back. There we go. There we go, people. Oh, on the camera again. Anglers and danglers. What is this? Another bream? A little small bream. Oh, come on, babe, and you come. Well, major session just moving swims like that. It is now, guys, 20 to 6. I feel I pushed my luck far enough. There are still bubbles coming up out there, no question of that. And I could probably pick the odd fish off, but I do not. Wow, that was a big cart moved over there. That's why I'm sitting there. I've seen two big commons roll on the edge of those ripples over there. I mean, big ones like could go possible 20s. I'm getting lift bites down here as well, so I've got to be careful. I'm basically peeling the crust off all my leftover bits of bread and just tossing them in there in case something decides to come up on the surface. The majority is going to be on the, on the bottom. I think I'll give it a... There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Bam! Oh, lovely jubbly. Feels like a bream. Yeah, it's a bream. It's got to be about 10 of those, I should think. A lot of fish today, a lot of fish. Get in. Ew. Ooh, he's in. Yeah, another bream. Was the target species to turn into the carp? <laughs> well, I've had a lot of bream, that's for sure. Good bit of fun. Assume the position with yet another bream. 
sweet corn and bread. How simple is that? 40p for the loaf and about £1.50, I think, for the corn. Different fish took me on the drop. Wow, look at this. Look at this, people. Very nice rod. Now then, look at the lovely, pretty colours on that, Jim. Lovely. Caught, caught me on the drop, that one. So that's what's taking some of the bread off the top. Ah, oh, this one don't feel like a bream, guys. This one does not feel like a bream. I've got to get in the other side. Up and over that snag there. And hopefully he'll kite this way. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Not good, eh? Not good. <laughs> oh, no, not good. What a good job that was on back one. Here we go again. Here we go again. Double trouble. I'll take gamble on this one. If he comes off, he comes off. Foot on the rod. It's all been done before, guys. Oops, doesn't like the pressure. At least he's kiting out. Oh, that's not a 20 pounder. Get this one in. We might get a chance of showing you two. Like that one's in. Right on the net. Pressure on this one. Second fish, that one's fine. He's just sitting in the net. Whew. Man alive. Always, always have rods on bait runners, back winds, slack drags. I was literally the only feet away from the other side of that bush. This is a better fish. This is definitely a better fish. Here we come. He's going to have to go in the same net because I've got no choice at all. Absolutely no choice. At least he's on the Avon rod. Come on, babe. Not quite. I think we've got what you would call. We've got what's called a twofer, guys. We've got a twofer. Two for one. Oh, here you go. You always know something bizarre is going to happen at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show last cast. I wouldn't think there's a hope in hell trying to get these two fish up for you. But I will try. I will try. Come on, give me a break, guys. Give me a break. Get it where you can, guys. Double whammy of carp. <laughs>